Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, if you have any like advice, any comments on the lighting? I'm, I think in the next few weeks you're going to see some experiments with lighting to try and improve the general lighting situation, both of me and of uh, the pens. So let me know down in the comments. So <laughs> since that's what we're here for, let's take a look at the pens. All right, so these are the pens I've been using throughout this week. I have my Luxor 156. I inked up an Aurora 88, not the Jove finish, this is my orange one. Orange you glad I inked it up. Um, orange you glad I didn't put orange ink in it. <laughs> my Parker uh, 25, so it gets to live to fight another week. Sorry, just saw something on it. Uh, Parker 51. Parker Dual Fold Slimline Jr. Whoops. <laughs> uh, Parker Slimline. No. Slim Fold. Sorry. Parker Slim Fold. Parker Ellipse. Parker Jotter. Zoink. Park. No. Stipula something or other. Etruria 88. Piece of junk. And finally, the Platinum Izumo. Which would be nice if I actually put it on screen. There we go. Platinum Izumo. As always, I'll be recording my uh, writing sample in this Cognitive Surplus. All right, so the first pen up tonight was my first impression this week. It is actually empty of ink and been sitting beside my sink ready to be re-cleaned uh, out and re-inked. Uh, this is the Luxor 156. But I decided, since I hadn't cleaned it out yet, just to refill it with the same ink and use it a little longer. So it has a wonderful gold nib. And fun fact, for reasons, you can find a macro photograph of the nib on the uh, video description, or a link to it at least. So this is the Luxor. Whoops, Lex. <laughs> L-U-X-O-R. I'm thinking of Lex Luthor or a Lexus car or something. Alright, and this is Parker Quink. Washable blue. I'm waiting for the day. Penultimate Dave does one of his uh, ink videos and talks about this one. He does a lot of swatches of a wide variety of inks. I, uh, you know, he doesn't get too deep into the properties of the ink, like water soluble and all that. But you definitely get a good analysis of the colors, and you get a good comparison with other, you know, maybe not what you would have compared it with, but with other inks, which is still interesting. You know, the way he associates inks together may not be the way you or I do, but uh, still interesting. Some of the batches, of course, just like anything, you're like, I don't care about those inks, so. <laughs> but I, I enjoy it. All right, my next pen, which uh, really needs to make a trip to Italy for some crack repair. Let's see if it shows up here. Something about my lighting is goofy tonight. Yeah, there is a crack right where my fingernail is. Oopsie, it's catching in it. I, uh, I really want to send it to Italy to be... Yeah, it's not showing up at all. But anyway, I really want to send it to Italy to be repaired. But, uh, you know, with the pandemic, with shipping, I just kind of, oh, I have a uh, 
somebody overseas that uh, is interested in a pen trade with me. You know, neither of us is getting rid of any pens, but, uh, you know, just getting rid of some we don't care about as much so we can get some that we do care about. And uh, it turns out, you know, neither one of us are comfortable shipping right now because of things going on in our respective countries' postal services. So we're just waiting and... Uh, you know, I have his pens all packed up, but who knows? I may throw some extra stuff in if it sits here long enough. I, I, I was thinking I might send him some ink samples and things. All right, so La Aurora 88. And this is the Flex Nib that Aurora came out with a few years ago. And the ink in it is Roshizuku. And you remember last week I said, yeah, I want a gray ink and a green ink. Well, here's the gray one. I don't remember what it's called. Shinkai, I think. Luckily, I have an Evernote page with it all prepared for me in case I forget. And it's a good thing I looked. Kurisami! <laughs> So, it's winter. I think a nice wintry gray ink is appropriate. Another fun gray ink is a roar, or sorry, uh, Omas gray, which has a little bit of a greenish cast to it, actually. But I like this one. It's got some interesting shading. Uh, the Parker 50 or sorry 25 is still inked up mainly because I have so many pens inked with Parker Quink washable blue but uh, I, I really doubt it will be in this batch next week but since it's here let's just enjoy it one more time I feel like I need to get light on the other side of these pens Let me just see here what I can do. Did that help at, at all? I don't know. Okay, that might be better. I don't know. I, I, I still think I need light on this side. So uh, one of my projects for when I get a break is going to be to evaluate the lighting situation. I, uh, I gotta do better. But anyway, Parker 25. Ooh. Maybe it's getting close to empty. Parker 25. This one was, uh, I think a medium. Uh, of course, Parker Quink washable blue. I've taken this one to work a number of times since I inked it up. It didn't get written empty like the Luxor did, but you know, I have enjoyed writing with it. It's a, it's a good workhorse type pen, a good everyday carry type of pen. Just maybe not the pen you uh, use to show off your sexiest ink. But what a great, just very comfortable, low-cost pen. And what's funny is I bought it because of the finish connection, not because I was looking for a Parker 25. Make of that what you will. Yeah, just, I just somehow need to get light or less contrast. Somehow need to get light behind me. And I almost think, um, you know, I, I've always mixed and matched my uh, writing lighting and my me lighting. But now that I filmed them separately, maybe that's not so necessary anymore. So this is a vintage Parker 51. Woo. Okay, that's unexpected because I was using that today. And actually that brings up a good point. Um, one of the things I've been discovering with uh, a few of my Parkers this week uh, apparently this may be one of them, is riding upside down in my pocket. They actually empty out and then they don't want to start. Like the feed and everything empties out. Other pens have no problem. 
but uh, some of them have a big problem with that. So maybe this is one of them. This Today was the first time I've taken this one to school. You know, historically, if I've taken it to school, this is always just written in my pen pouch. And so it got to be semi-horizontal most of the time. This next pen has not visited school. Oh, it looks like somebody had a snack out of the end of it. Um, this is a Parker Dual Fold, let me get the name right, Slimline Junior. So, a little smaller than the Dual Fold I had last week. I don't have a Dual Fold inked up this week. Uh, but anyway, see I said I wanted a green ink this week. There you go. Oh, except you can't see it. Dual Fold. And the ink in it is Parker Quink. I hear a noise right outside my window, and I'm just going to peek to see what it is. Can't tell what it is. <laughs> All right, so this is Parker Quink Green. Not washable green or anything, just green. And truthfully, out of the green inks I have, this is one of my favorites. It's a shame I only have two bottles of it. But I'll tell you what it kind of reminds me of is that Dea Trementis Mint Turquoise. In fact, uh, I should start writing these ideas down, because that would be a fun comparison, just to compare it with Mint Turquoise. Why not? It's a video idea. Makes the pens last longer. Okay, I still hear that noise outside. I'm going to go peek out a different window. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised it carried that far. It's my neighbor across the street and down like one or two houses um, shoveling his driveway. And I would swear, it sounds like he's right out front of my house shoveling. So the sound must be carrying just amazingly well tonight. Because, yeah, I, I seriously, like, what is going on outside my house? Uh, I didn't shovel my driveway. I mean, we had a half inch of snow, and I just said, Psh, who cares? So uh, hopefully I don't regret that, but I don't think I will. Those of you on the East Coast, sorry, it's North Dakota. We didn't get your snowstorm. <laughs> All right, my next pen is the Parker Ellipse, which has a, I think, a very nice lacquer on it. I don't usually like metal pens, but I think this is a good one. So this is the Parker Ellipse. Uh, has a, I believe, a medium nib on it. The ink in it is Parker Quink. Yeah, it seriously sounds like he's right outside the front door. Parker Quink Black. I wonder if the microphone's picking up any of those sounds. The way I have it turned, it may not be, but... Uh, Man, like I thought, well, maybe my next door neighbor is shoveling, but she is uh, not. It's Her light's not on. She always would turn on her outside light to shovel. And uh, yeah, it's way over there. <laughs> this is a, what is it? Parker Jotter, sorry. Drew a blank there for a minute. Um, mainly it's been my envelope pen. I think it's interesting, this Parker Quink Black looks so gray. Whereas in the dual fold last week, let's see, uh, not quite side by side, but this one and this one, these two ink swatches, you can kind of see it's a, a lot darker in the dual fold. 
this ellipse is very uh, dry. So this is a Parker Jotter. Has a medium nib and the ink in it is platinum. Carbon black. And just to circle back for a minute, this gray look, I wonder if my uh, pens I had before I really got into collecting were a little dry because that's part of why I was uh, excited to switch to Noodler's Black because I just liked, oh, it's black instead of gray. So, uh, I don't know. I've gotten so I don't mind Parker Quink Black as much. Um, kind of like it. I'm getting more back into the Parker inks. Not a lot of colors there, but... Uh, you know, I think uh, if I'd made different choices in life, maybe I'd be back to Parker Black being my black ink. If I just didn't have so flipping much Pelican Black. Okay, this pen was a little naughty last week, and you can tell I haven't been that inspired to write with it, but here it is. I'm kind of, I, I'm tempted once again to wash it out, send it to a Nibmeister, because... Ick. So this is my stipula. Oh my god. Seriously? I could show you the letter I was writing with this just last night. I will admit I haven't written with it today, but just last night. Now I will also admit I stopped uh, halfway through the page and switched pens because I got tired of the railroading, but... Oh my god. So this is the lovely stipula Etruria eighty eight with a T flex and uh I don't know, a year or two ago I stuck a Nemesine nib on it and liked that a lot better. So, you know, I think the only reason I'm still sticking with the T Flex is because the thing costs so much money and I damn well want it to write. So, the ink in it is Lamy Mango or something like that. Something I picked up before the pandemic when I could still travel to Fargo. Not that I travel to Fargo very often, because southwest North Dakota to Fargo is about six hours of driving, one way. Not something I do very often, even when there's not a pandemic on. Right now, there's no way in hell you'd get me to do that. So, there's a gross swatch, and let's move on before I say something really depressing. This is my Platinum Izumo. This one really needs better lighting. And I feel like, I don't know if that helped or not. I feel like there's just too much. All right, we're gonna watch history being made. I'm gonna try an experiment. I'm taking this light. I don't know if you can see it. Let me uh, bring up my preview of me. Do I have a preview of me? Okay, I can't see a preview of me, so I don't know if you see this or not, but this light usually is on that side of my desk. I'm thinking, let's put it right here. Let's shine this direction and just see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen? And let's look at the pen again. Do you see a difference? I don't. Maybe I need to put like a bed sheet over it or something. 
Anyway, definitely more lighting experimenting needed here. So this is a platinum Izumo. I-Z-U-M-O. I swear I had a different yellow ink I've been writing with. I did, so I'm adding a bonus plan here at the end. I had knew I'd been writing with yellow all week, and I got so pissed off at that uh, stipula that I know that wasn't it. Figured out what it is. I'm going to try one more thing with this light. We're experimenting here. History is being made and stuff. Oh. Don't quite know how to clamp it, so it'll do what I want it to do. So, never mind. History will be made another week. Whoops. Well, that was nasty. That's just nasty. Alright, so Platinum Izumo. Uh, what is this ink? Uh, it's a cursive, coarse cursive italic nib. Yeah, that's horrible. Those, I, I really think those shadows are disgusting. Okay, a third, fourth, or fifth, or whatever I'm on option just occurred to me. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, what a night. Alright, so this is a... Whatever it is. Uh, this is a Kyono Oto ink. Uh, one of the few brands where I'll make an exception if they come out with a new color. Otherwise, I'm not buying more inks at the moment. Kyono Oto. Sakura Nozumi. Which is kind of a nice dusky purple. It's pretty. So, I don't know if you can see what I did with the lamp, but it is right now laying on the desk. So, my god, the pen still looks horrible. And part of the problem is the auto exposure on this camcorder. Oh, look! Now it looks fantabulous. Again, flippin' auto exposure. So, uh, I will get into a little small technical discussion of exposure here in a little bit. But, uh, yeah. What you see on film or video I guess in this case isn't necessarily reflective of how it really is all right my last pen which I realized I've been writing with all week because I inked it up again is this platinum inter or sorry Parker International citrine and uh, you know part of the I, I was so frustrated with that uh, stipula that I put a yellow ink in this one so let's take a look at the yellow ink. Let's see if I remember what it is. So this is Parker Quink. No, sorry. Parker Dual Fold. You know, this light over here is helping the shadow situation. International. Uh, 
uh, has a medium nib and the ink in it is Rohr and Klingner no it isn't Ferris wheel press I am so sorry buttered popcorn which is uh, actually a really nice yellow ink. Yeah, I like that one. All right, so uh, I'm wearing this silly squirrel mask. The reason is, I haven't worn this one before. I bought it a while ago, but it just kind of, I don't know, it, it wasn't one I'd put on. And the kids noticed that it was a new mask today. And so one of the kids says to me, are you going to be sorry that you can't wear masks anymore when you get the vaccine? <laughs> no, I won't miss this at all. So uh, one thing I have enjoyed this year, I haven't had to shave very often because, uh, you know, you can see this now, but uh, when I'm wearing the mask, I kind of get away with it. And I could just argue that, well, you know, the grain of my whiskers makes the mask just kind of crawl down my face. So if, if I don't shave them off, then it doesn't crawl down my face and I don't want to get the little bunchkins any COVIDs. So that's what I'm, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But it has been nice for the first time in, was it 21, 22, something like that, years of teaching, not to be shaving all the time for school. Um, so I guess that's a perk of the masks. And I'll be honest, um, I won't miss them except maybe during allergy season you may see me wear a mask. Uh, because wow, was that life changing last fall during allergy season? That in a week, week and a half or so, where I was allergic to some whatever was in the air, it made a world of difference to my sleep and my quality of life. So, yeah, you'll see the masks. I'm not throwing them away when COVID ends, but I'll be wearing them a lot less frequently. Maybe if there's a lot of gross diseases going around, I'll put it on again. Um, thank you for all the comments people made last week. I Sometimes I think I'm being too personal. Uh, I do share sometimes things that other reviewers have said, Oh, I wouldn't have shared that if I was you. Last week may have been one of those times. But uh, anyway, I appreciate the comments all of you made. Uh, last week was a very, very rough week for me. It was uh, I was only able to share one event because it was public knowledge. But uh, several events that just are events that by themselves would make for a really rough year. And uh, several of them in a week is just wow. So I thank you all who commented and offered your sympathies or advice or whatever. And uh, so I do appreciate it. And thank you. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who thought I overshared, yeah, I probably did. But uh, I could tell when I was filming that video Sunday, what was it, Sunday afternoon or Sunday night? Anyway, when I finally got around to pens and use, I just, uh, I gotta say something, I can't just pretend like this is great, because it was not, <laughs> that was not the bubbly, happy, wasky squirrel, it was more of a, here's this pen, here's the next pen, yeah, I wrote with it this week, and yeah, I, I was off my game, um, and you know, the reality is, time helps, I don't know that anything like that you get over, but the distance makes it easier to deal with or at least set aside. So, uh, yeah, the distance of time. Uh, I've got part of my notes covered up, so let me uncover that. All right, there we go. Um, one of the comments I wrote down on my notes for this video is, if I ever do get to the point in my career where that kind of stuff doesn't bother me, which is, oh, we had another suicide. That may be the time when it's time to retire because I'm not effective anymore. Um, 
There's times as a teacher when you have to close off, shut down the emotion, or be a hard ass. But I think when you get to the point you just don't care anymore, it's time to be done. So I guess it's a good reminder that I do still care, at least about that, but uh, I really wish I wouldn't have been reminded about it that way. Um, today, walking home from school, I got a good reminder of what a wonderful commute I have. I, I know I did a video a long time ago where I showed my commute. Um, I walk to school and walk home from school. I walk around town a lot, too. I mean, I'm weird that way. But, you know, it's a town of 1,500, so how long does it take to walk around town? But, anyway, so I, I shared that, and... Uh, Tonight, walking home, well, we had a lot of snow today, and the temperatures have dropped. We're in for a cold week or so. Cold week or so. And uh, we had, like, half an inch of snow, so... You know, those of you on the East Coast are saying, half an inch in North Dakota? Yeah, this has been a really warm, snow-free winter. It hasn't felt like winter at all, really. But, I, uh, on my way home, I took a detour. I walked across the highway... And it was uh, pure ice. And I just thought to myself, how nice it is that my commute is on foot. I'm not trying to walk or drive home in a car on that. So uh, I said to myself back in college, I, I was a freshman in college. And I remember watching this professor. Um, I'll, I'll tell you his name because he's passed away now. Uh, his name was Dr. Daggett. He was a math professor. I had him for Calculus One, And every day, he would walk home from the college to his home, which was across the uh, street from the college somewhere. And I just thought to myself, way back then as a freshman in college, that's what I want. And I've had that since I moved to North Dakota. The only exception has been when I was working up in Fort Totten in the summers. Well, I don't live there, so that's why I wasn't able to walk to work. But other than those couple of summers where I was working on the reservation, I've been able to walk to work for the past 21, 22 years, whatever it's been. So, uh, yeah, and I'd like to continue that. You know, I think as long as I continue living here, I've got that, but uh, who knows in the future. Um... As I said at the beginning, I've been experimenting. Right now, you're watching me on the new camera, which I can turn on or off with the cell phone, but none of the settings work, even though I damn well got them to work last Saturday. I was able to do everything, but now I can't, and I don't know why. Um, so I, I wrote a post last night, I said, Oh, I'm just going to use that pen for camera B that looks at the pens. And uh, that sounded like a great idea until I tried to film pens in use tonight. Like, holy cow. Because it doesn't automatically zoom. If I move a pen closer to get a closer look at it, the autofocus doesn't necessarily catch it. Um, so I have to manually focus. I do appreciate that it does a great job with exposure. I'd have a lot more control over exposure, uh, as I demonstrated already with the Platinum Izumo. But, what a pain to use that camera to look at my pens. So, it's back on being camera A. Which is fine, you know, I have to make sure the zoom is right and the exposure is right. And I, I know the settings to use for exposure on me, so that's fine. You know, if I do some experiments with this lighting here, um, I'm reasonably happy with the lighting on me. I I mean, we got to look at my face in it, but whatever. But I do need to work on the lighting with the pens. And, and maybe I need to zoom out a little bit, zoom, <laughs> because I do see I'm a little large on the screen, but... You know, it, it's it's the pens that really need the work. And, and I know I get better results when I have daylight coming in through this window over here. Uh, it's just not always easy to get that lighting during the school year. 
In the morning, it's too bright here to film if the if these curtains are open. And uh, yes, I got to be sure I'm around in the afternoon. So yeah, I'm going to experiment a little more. I ended up I've got a light here. You don't normally see this light. This light normally hangs on the book on my desk. No, it doesn't want to sit on the floor. It normally just hangs on the desk over here and uh, provides lighting from this direction. So I experimented today. I hung it on the shelf over here, closer to me, which wasn't great. And then I tried laying it. It actually worked the best, laying it on the desk in front of me. So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to experiment with it. I've got that light, and I have another one here that is tangled around something, so I won't pick it up. Another one like it. Anyway, back there. Um, oops. Tangled around something. So I will. Uh, I, I tried to use it as a backlight to me, but I think you need better hair than I have to make it work. So it, it's pretty much just set on the floor. So I don't know. There, there, I think I can make this thing better lit anyway. And the auto exposure, I this camcorder. I think I need to read more about it. You know, I know how to get some custom settings done, and I've done that. But I, there, there, there's more I need to do. So, a lot more work to do. I, it'll probably take till I get a nice break to, to myself to work on that. Uh, and then the last thing I've been thinking about this week, it's probably no secret, I am planning to put a new roof on this house this summer. And I've been really thinking about what to do for a roof. Now, uh, for I've always said I want a steel roof when I re-roof my house. And this was before I even owned this house. I just I knew I wanted a steel roof. The wonderful thing with steel is it lasts forever. So, uh, especially at my age, it would be the last roof I ever put on this house. If I go with asphalt shingles, it'll be cheaper, but I will probably be re-roofing it, I don't know, around the time I retire, maybe a little bit after. And do I really want to be doing that? Well, the thing with making decisions for the future is you don't know what the future holds. You can't predict it. You know, I moved to North Dakota thinking, well, this will be a nice adventure for a year or two. And here I am, what did I say, 21, 22 years later. Um, but now I'm 45 years old and I'm thinking more about retirement. Where do I want to retire to and what kind of amenities do I want? You know, I'm in a uh, school district that is larger than the state of Rhode Island and is home to 450 students. Um, maybe around 4,000 people, 3,000 to 4,000 anyway. So very rural. So a lot of amenities just aren't around. And uh, when you get older, you start thinking about medical amenities, uh, social things. You know, when I retire, what will I do with my time? Um, I, I personally kind of want to ease into retirement, and just work part time or whatever. But yeah, it's a uh, very different. And uh, so I've been thinking a lot about where do I want to end up. And uh, the thought has been coming to me a lot this winter. And you know, again, 45, it could all change. Maybe somewhere like Vermont. I, I think by the time I retire, fully retire, because I could actually retire at 57. But by the time I fully retire, I've always said 65 might be a good age, and I'll have a few years to explore and do things. Um, you know, so that would be 20 years from now. 57 is only 12 years from now. But what if I retire from this job, uh, then I can collect North Dakota State Teachers Retirement, but then go on and teach in another state for another 10 years or so and get vested in their retirement system. So, Anyway, that's what I've been thinking about, and uh, my parents won't be around, probably, but uh, my brother will. He's my younger brother. 
Um, so I've been thinking about, I don't really want to live in the state where he lives for some reasons, but what if I find a nice small town in a place like Vermont or New Hampshire? Um, I would say Massachusetts, but um, I have some issues with how they handle Social Security and such for teachers that I don't want to get tangled up with that. But, uh, you know, that wouldn't be bad. Retire here at 57, work until I'm 67 in another state and retire. And maybe along the way, uh, you know, in these subsequent 12 years, I kind of think maybe my second act when I move to a new state would be a different avenue in teaching. I'm not really interested in being a principal. I, uh, I think that's too many of the bad parts of teaching and not enough of the good parts of teaching to be rewarding. You know, to me, I'm glad there's people willing to do it. I'm just not one of them. But what about being a guidance counselor? So, you know, I, I worked with somebody who was in the process of getting her license as a guidance counselor. And wow, did she have to put in some ridiculous hours and do a bunch of silly stuff. But, uh... That might be for me. I I, uh, I could never be a true counselor, but uh, I, I do see the potential in being a guidance counselor. So anyway, I don't have to make a decision this year. I, the new roof will be enough expense <laughs> for one year. I, I don't need to pursue an advanced degree on top of that. But I think that's something uh, i got to decide in the next few years. But... Uh, you know, it really put the whole roof into perspective that I thought, okay, maybe I don't want that metal roof. Maybe I do just want an asphalt shingle roof. Uh, and then plow that extra money into making the house look decent so that hopefully I can sell it, which won't be easy, but you know, that's where I'm at anyway. So I just overshared again. I'm, prob I'm sure one or two of the other reviewers who actually watch my channel will tell me that, but you know, that, that's why you should make plans for the future, is uh, your decisions that you make year to year or day to day should help you build towards those goals. Now, it may turn out that for whatever reason I'm not able to retire to Vermont or whatever, I may be forced to retire to North Dakota, and I'll be like, well, shoot, why didn't I get that metal roof back then? But uh, I think it's also important to set goals and make your decisions toward those goals, which makes it more likely you'll actually achieve those goals or something along the line to those goals. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm making it public right now instead of just telling friends so that hopefully I get held to that. So uh, there, obviously there's a lot more that I don't want to say on here about why I would choose to move away from North Dakota in 12 years. But... Uh, I think that's a good starting point. So, anyway, hope that was interesting. I uh, Just for fun, I put a link to an article about teacher salaries, but what was interesting is it compared teacher salaries to salaries of other workers in the States. Uh, I'm not going to make a comment about my opinion on teacher salaries, except I will say this. You know, you have to pay people enough to them for them to want to be teachers. And I am happy that North Dakota, as far as raw average salary, you know, there's some other issues, but raw average salary has definitely pulled itself in the middle of the pack. When I started teaching here, North Dakota was one of the lowest paid states for teachers. So uh, I think that's important that they have pulled themselves up. Now, uh, compared to other workers, again, yeah, we're not doing as well as other states, but... Um, you know, if you're in a low salary state and your teachers are low salary, you're going to rank higher on this particular list than you would, you know, if your state actually take. Okay, anyway, I'm sorry, it is past 8 o'clock, so my brain is turning into hamburger. <laughs> when my brain was wider awake and read this article, it, it all, I, I was coherently able to argue it, but uh, yeah, this whole... I am not a night person, I'm a morning person. Why don't you film these in the morning, Mr. Squirrel? Uh... <laughs> so, anyway, I want to thank you for watching, I want to thank you for listening, and I just 
realized that I totally forgot to turn on my wonderful microphone. And so this whole me talking part, I guess I get to find out what the audio is like on this new Leica camera. Because I have refused to re-record that. So <laughs> I want <coughs> excuse me, I better put my mask on so I don't spray you. Good fake cough though, wasn't it? So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And again, what are your comments about the lighting and the relative cameras? It did not go as planned tonight, but I think I learned a few things. So let me know what you think down in the comments. And uh, hey, do you have any thoughts about moving back east? Uh, or maybe there's somewhere else I'd like, you know. Okay, I like Four Seasons, but I'm holding up my fingers, but I like Four Seasons, there we go. Um, but let me know what you think. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.